video, we're going to be looking at feedback systems within homeostasis. So we have to maintain a stable environment within our body. Feedback is a way of stabilizing some features of the body in an ongoing cycle. If not feeding back, you will continue on the one path and it will continue to become unbalanced until feedback occurs and this is why it is important to feed back. So, let's say for example this is the normal level here. You can see that that's the normal level. If this normal level tips in either direction, it needs to be brought back to the same level. Okay, let's talk about an example of temperature. When your temperature increases or decreases outside of that 37 degree Celsius range, this here will want to tip back to normal and it will want to bring your body temperature back to 37 degrees Celsius. What is feedback? So homeostasis is brought by two stages. The first one is detecting a change in the environment or within your body. So this is the first step of feedback. It involves sensory cells. Another word for sensory cells are receptors. They're present within the body to detect the change in the temperature and or chemical composition within the body. This change in the environment is called a stimulus. You need to become familiar with that word. So any stimulus in the environment makes a change within your body. Types of stimulus. We have multiple types of stimulus and they are detected by different receptors in the body. So detecting change. We might detect excessive heat or cold. So if we were to go into a freezer, for example, a walk-in freezer, we can detect that change straight away. If you actually touch something that is extremely hot, our hand might jerk back in a reaction. So that's the stimulus. The stimulus is something that's really hot or really cold. Another example is pain. If something sharp was to touch our skin, we would react because of the pain and we might jerk backwards. So a change in ambient temperature. If you're in a hot outside environment and you walk into a library, for example, and they have the air condition pumping, it means that your body is going to detect that change walking into this air conditioning of, of really cold environment. You might have a low or high water level in your body. If your water levels are low, it means that you create a thirst within your mouth. And if you have high water levels, you might have no thirst at all and you might be adequate, like you might be satisfied with your water level. And salt levels are also maintained as well. If your salt levels are too low, you might actually have a salt craving as well. Now you might have low food or sugar levels. If you've had this before and most people have experienced this, you might notice that you feel weaker or your body actually changes and it makes you crave to eat. And when you eat, then all of a sudden you feel better. There might be a lack of sleep and you, if you have a lack of sleep one night, the next night you actually sleep more deeply and often for longer. You have an increase in body weight. So within your body, if you create lots of waste, it might be, have a build up and it might actually make you want to go to the toilet, okay? Or you might sweat to get rid of this excess waste because sweating is another way to release it. What is feedback? So the second stage of homeostasis is counteracting these changes. We understand that there's stimuli and they actually create a change, but how do we counteract from these changes? So we have effector organs, such as muscles or glands that work to reverse the change. Now muscles might contract, and we understand how muscles work. Glands release chemicals or hormones to make the balance come back to normal within our body. A response that successfully reverses the change will return the body to homeostasis and that is its relatively constant state. When the response affects the original stimulus, the stimulus response model is called a feedback mechanism. In a feedback mechanism, the response alters the stimulus. Now this is a good feedback loop, okay, you can actually see that there's a stimuli, if it was extremely hot pot that you put your hand on, we have receptors in our skin and the receptors detect, okay, um, detect the change in the temperature in the hot pot. It goes to a coordinator. The coordinator here is the brain, okay, and the brain might send a message and it sends it to an effector and the effector is our nerves. So our nervous system carries this message. When the message gets to 
having a response, the message, the nerves make our muscles contract to pull your hand away from that hot pot. And this is a feedback me mechanism and it goes around until it reaches a stable state. When the feedback reduces the effect of the original stimulus, it is known as a negative feedback system. So whether your body increases in temperature or decreases in temperature, both are actually negative feedback systems and it comes back to normal. Okay, so if, it, if you increase in temperature and you need to bring your temperature back to normal, that's a negative feedback loop. If you decrease in temperature, again, it's a negative feedback loop because it's counteracting from the normal. So both ways, whether you increase or decrease in something, to bring it back to normal, it's called a negative feedback loop. Negative feedback is the process when the body detects a change in the equilibrium and initiates a response for the body to make a change. It sends a message to the effector, regulating the changes and returns the body back to its equilibrium. Now, the effector might be nerves or it could be your glands and your glands are the things that re release hormones in your body to make a change. So, a stimulus response pathway. We have our receptors that detect the stimulus. Then it goes to our peripheral nervous system. Our peripheral nervous system is our nerves within our arms and our legs. The central nervous system is our spinal cord and our brain. So there's two nervous systems that are working together. First, it goes to our peripheral nervous system and then it goes to our control center in our brain. Now, the control center in our brain that it often goes to is called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is like a reader and it reads what's happening in the body in the internal and external environment. And then it might send a message. Now, it could go in either two directions. It might send a message to the pituitary gland. And this gland releases hormones within the body to bring your body back to a normal state. Okay, and the effector might be to release a hormone. Ultimately, it, otherwise it will go from the control center in the brain, which is the hypothalamus, and it might send a message to your peripheral nervous system. So your nerve takes that message, and then it goes to the effector, which is your muscle contraction. The hypothalamus sends messages to the pituitary gland that sends messages to other glands, for example, testicles, ovaries, thyroid gland, and pancreas. All of these are glands that actually release hormones, and there's many more in the body. Stimulus response pathway. This is an example of one stimulus response pathway. Your stimulus could be a loud noise and it's detected by our ears. So that's our receptors. This creates a message and it's sent via the nervous system as impulses to the brain. When it's sent to the brain, it, via the central nervous system, our brain processes the information and sends a message back to the effector. So it sends a message to an effector. In this case, the effector is the muscle to make our body react. So if we've heard a loud sound behind us, it actually might make our body react and the response is to jerk back and have a look where that sound is coming from. Or if it's loud enough, your body reaction might actually just be to put your hands over your ears depending on the way that you react to certain signals or stimuli. So the stimulus response pathway, this is a fantastic feedback model. And if you need to write feedback models, this is a really good way to do it. So to the left is the homeostasis feedback model. If you just want to do one, you can just do one loop of the negative feedback. But this one here can show both. So say, for example, with temperature, and I'll be getting you to do this as an example later, if there is an increase in temperature or a decrease in temperature, you can show both of these on this feedback model. We start with a stimulus. And like I said before, the stimulus might be hot or cold. It could be pain, okay? There could be water levels that are different in your body. So this, that's your stimulus. Your body detects the stimulus by a receptor. And then the receptor sends this message to a control center so the control center is your brain, and your brain then sends a message, so it tends to be your hypothalamus, and it sends a message to either pituitary gland to release a hormone, and these goes to the glands, so the effector is actually releasing the hormones, and the hormone detects or t makes a change, and this is the response that your body makes in, to make your body go back to normal. So your body makes a response, within homeostasis. Now, 
as you can see, it comes around, it goes back, and after your body makes a response, it's brought back to balance. But let's say, for example, your body just keeps on going and keeps making that response. All of a sudden, you have it, another negative feedback loop, okay? And again, it might be, this one here might be increase in temperature, and your body might bring it back to normal. This one here might be a decrease in temperature, and your body needs to bring that back to normal too. So this is important to remember, and it will help you to understand a feedback system of homeostasis. So I've got an example here of a stimulus response pathway um, of water concentration in the blood. We start with the stimulus um, when constructing the models. So we always start with the stimulus here. Now let's go through this together. We have a balance line. This is the balance, and we always know that that's where the body wants to be. This is the stable state. This is homeostasis. Now, there might be a stimulus. Your water concentration decreases in blood. Now, you might not have drunk water for a while, and it, your water concentration might decrease in your blood, and your receptors need to detect that change. And the receptors here, for this particular example, are osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus detect the change. So we have osmoreceptors. So the control center, the pituitary gland, releases the antidiuretic hormone. Now, a diuretic, if you drink coffee or tea or anything with caffeine, so Coca-Cola, all of these actually have a slight diuretic in it, which means that after you drink these certain drinks, it makes you want to urinate. So it makes you want to go more often as well. So if you're a really strong coffee drinker, or a really strong tea drinker or Coke drinker, you'll find that you need to go to the toilet more often. So your body here is actually releasing a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. So it does the opposite of diuretic. It makes you not want to go to the toilet. So the effector is increased antidiuretic hormone is released. As it's released, what it's actually doing, our kidneys uptake more water and it means that our urine is more concentrated and we need to urinate less frequently. So this is when we don't have enough water in our body, the stimulus, the water concentration decreases, we re our receptors detect that change, send a message to the control center, which is our brain, that goes around to the receptors, which we increase in the antidiuretic antidiuretic hormone which is released and it makes a response within our kidneys. If it goes the opposite way, if we drink too much water for example and if we drink lots um, just in general, what actually happens is the water concentration increases in blood. This means our blood becomes thinner. The opposite is your blood becomes thicker. So water concentration increases in blood, it makes your blood thinner. Osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus detect the change and the message is sent to the pituitary center in the brain. So the pituitary gland releases ADH hormone still, but it releases less, okay? So it doesn't just stop altogether, it just releases less antidiuretic hormone. And as a result, we don't feel thirsty, there's less uptake of water, there's decreased water concentration in blood, and our urine is less concentrated and you might actually find that you're urinating more frequently when you drink lots of water or liquids. So can you construct your own, using this one as an example, for temperature regulation? Press pause now to have a go at this one. Okay, so this is the feedback model for temperature regulation. Again, the balance. We know that the balance is around approximately 37 degrees Celsius. So let's say, for example, the stimulus is the air or body temperature increases. Either one, because if you actually exercise, your body temperature is increasing. If you're just in the outside environment and it's summer, the temperature is already, the ambient temperature is already increased. So what detects that? It's our thermoreceptors in our skin. So the thermostat of our body, the receptors in our skin detect this change and the message is sent to the control center. So this is the control center, which is our brain, and the signal is sent to the hypothalamus. When it's sent to the hypothalamus, it sends a message to our sweat glands. So the effector is our sweat glands, they're activated, and dilation of blood vessels. Why would your blood vessels dilate? Have you noticed that when you do more exercise, especially if you are quite a muscular person, if you do more exercise, 
and as you're doing exercises you might actually find that your blood vessels are expanding and the what that actually does is it increases the chance so it rises to the surface these blood vessels and it means that heat can be released so that's the point of actually dilating the blood vessels if they're dilated which means that they become larger they're releasing heat the response so sweat evaporates and as it evaporates it has a cooling effect on your skin so dilated blood vessels release heat from your skin surface so that is the negative feedback loop of when it is hot outside or when you produce more heat so it's brought your body back to balance now if your stimulus is the opposite so either your air temperature is cold or you might just be cold because you're not moving around and you're not wearing enough clothes for the day so your air or body temperature decreases the receptors are the same so it's still the thermoreceptors in the skin that sends a message to your brain when it sends a message to the brain it's the signal is sent to the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus makes the effector have a response so it sends a message to an effector your sweat glands and blood vessels constrict now when your blood vessels constrict it means that you can't actually see your veins as much in your skin they sink deeper into your skin and the purpose of that is to keep your heat internalized it keeps your heat inside your body so that's why it decreases and constricts the response you decrease sweating your hand hair might actually stand up for insulation uh, movement and contractions of muscles to gain heat so if it goes cold enough you might actually find that your muscles do contract anyway this is a process of shivering and that is a way to gain and get more heat around your body and that brings it back to balance which is normal temperature okay these models of homeostasis are very important when you would like to visualize how the body responds to changes in the environment you can use this feedback model for multiple different types of stimuli your body may have multiple responses to deal with situations for example shivering your hair stand up sweating is inhibited and blood vessels constrict when the body is cold in summary the situation is monitored so when changes required body takes action okay your body takes action situation is reassessed and homeostasis is a constant cycle of monitoring and reassessing the body to maintain an inner balance this concludes feedback models mm -hmm.